Tomorrow is Mother's Day, so today we celebrate mothers and other sheroes, all of those women who have had uh, influence on our lives, who've been nurturing, whose lessons have uh, taught us to be honest, to be strong, to be faithful. On my desk are several pictures of family members. I actually have more family members than I have desk today, uh, but I do want to show you some of them. This is my mom, who is actually with my dad at my commissioning. And this is my um, grandparents, Dorothy and Raymond Hodge. And my grandmother was a Sunday school teacher at Lafayette Avenue United Methodist Church. And she taught Bible school and she did a lot of tutoring. She even uh, helped um, uh, Vietnamese refugees uh, learn English. This is uh, my dad with his current wife, uh, Sue, who I refer to as my step Sue. She's my stepmom. This is my grandmother, Evelyn Waldron, and my grandfather, whom I never met. And then this is my Aunt Joyce, who is the older one, and there's my mom. And um, Aunt Joyce, I'm sorry that I said older one. She's just the older one in this picture. I said it again. All of these women have had influences on me in ways that. Uh, I may not even recognize the full depth of, but each one of them is a role model and a mother or a mother figure for so many. I also uh, have uh, two sister-in-laws, Shelly and Penny, who are wonderful mothers, and Penny is a grandmother of three. And I have, uh, my niece is a, a great mother of three. And my uh, other niece is such a nurturing soul, and uh, her compassion for animals gives uh, St. Francis a run for his money. And she is a mother of several and she, of animals, and she cares for so many. And that's my family. And I am sure that all of you have uh, moms and aunts that you want to celebrate today. Today we're going to be hearing stories from some folks and I'm going to share about a couple shiros um, that have been uh, inspirations to me. I'm going to now read two different poems that I think are fitting for this celebration. First is, when you are a child, she walks before you to set an example. When you are a teenager, she walks behind you to be there should you need her. 
when you are an adult, she walks beside you so that there are two friends who can enjoy life together. And then this poem, these both are anonymous, this poem called My Mother Kept a Garden. My mother kept a garden, a garden of the heart. She planted all the good things that gave my life its start. She turned me to the sunshine and encouraged me to dream, fostering and nurturing the seeds of self-esteem. And when the winds and rain came, she protected me enough, but not too much, because she knew I'd need to stand up strong and tough. Her constant good example always taught me right from wrong, markers for my pathway that will last a lifetime long. I am my mother's garden. I am her legacy. And I hope today she feels the love reflected back from me. Happy Mother's Day. I lost my mom two and a half years ago. She was such a wonderful mom to everyone around her. She was funny and smart, and she, saw, and she taught me everything I needed to know to become a strong, confident, hardworking, and caring woman. She made the person I am today from all the love and support throughout the years. I miss her a lot, but I have to thank you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. This is dedicated to my mother, Ida Biddlecombe. She had the patience of a saint. She had the power of a lion. When I had stepped upon a nail, was scared to death and crying. She knew just how to tend my wounds and strove to keep me living. And mother, for my many times of rebe rebe rebellion, I hope I am forgiven. My mother, Jenny Wilbur, um, was who I, is one of my heroes, and she and I had a difficult relationship. I was not any, I'm not an easy person to get along with, and my dad said it was because our problems were because we were too much alike. My brother even says that, you're so much like mom. But as I got older, I think I learned more to appreciate her. And when she became ill, she lived with her illness for 10 years. And that woman was out and she was going to church. She was 
working for her faith. She was doing volunteer work. She was helping with dinner. She was taking the ladies out for lunch. She was taking the nurses out for lunch. It never stopped her. One day I was walking behind her up the stairs into the house and I heard her knees just grating. And I'm, I don't think I ever appreciated it till it happened to me actually. And, mm. But she, she lived her faith. She didn't just, she wasn't just a Christian on Sunday. She was every day. And I never appreciated that until, until after she was gone. And, and, and other people know the things I went through after she died and, and had a lot of trouble accepting. And, and she even came to me through a cousin to tell me it was all right. And she just, she didn't have an easy life. She was divorced when divorced was a bad thing. Her, her, uh, my brother and sisters, my sister and brothers were both raised Catholic and she made sure they went to the Catholic church because being divorced, she could have had her kids taken care, taken away from her for not raising them Catholic. And uh, she was a nurse in the hospital. She went to school while she still had three kids. She went to school, became a nurse. And her kid, my brother and sister's priest, Father Brown, wouldn't even call her Mrs. Wilbur. He always called her Mrs. Vazos, despite her having her nameplate on her nurse's uniform. When he would come to the hospital, he would never call her by her real name. Her, her newly married name, yeah. Her new mar it was like it was not a thing. And, but she never, I never knew that. My, bro my sister told me until my brother-in-law died that was when i found out when my brother-in-law was killed father brown came to our house to see my sister suzanne and that was the first time he had ever called her mrs wilbur hmm. and i never knew that my mother hid a lot of stuff from us that we've found out since she passed away it, it makes me admire her more because she didn't want to affect our relationships with other people i was privileged to know your mom too and uh, she, she, she was, she is really one of the saints of the church. And she would tell you, no, I'm just. No, I know. She would say that we're making too much out of her. <laughs> and she was one heck of an SU fan. Yes, she was. <laughs> she even got to go to an SU game. Got to go see Jim Beheim. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. I mentioned my mother and her, her faith sort of has led me and the way she handled things. I remember going to church, a Baptist church in New Fane, and I always went with my father and mother uh, never went. And finally, you know, at like nine, 10 years old, I said, why aren't you going, Mom? And she says, I sit home and quietly read the Bible. And she told me an incident that one family, a big family in New Fane, they split and there was another Baptist church because of this family split. And so she says, and she said, you sort of lose faith in that. She said, but the church is not the building, the church is the people. And I've all my life, I felt that. The other thing when I went to another, as a teenager, I went to another Baptist church. No, I will not let you be baptized. You will not become a member of that church. And at the time I thought, well, my friends are doing it. She says, that's the wrong reason to do that. She says, and I'll tell you right now, she said, you join the church, you got to be baptized, that type of thing. And I didn't want to be dunked. They had a big <laughs> cold water thing that you got dunked into. So I said, okay, it wasn't too hard to convince me to not be baptized there. She says, then, and she said, that's not a reason. She said, but I'm telling you, you will get, you'll grow up. You'll go to school, you'll get married, then is the time. Because she says, I don't expect you to always live in Appleton. And I said, okay. And that she says, and then 
you know, it's like you'll go away from the church. You'll move to a community. You'll get married and then have kids or whatever. And that was exactly right. Gordon and I got married and mar married in a Baptist church in, in uh, Buffalo. But anyways, we ended up for him to get a job transfer out here. We ended up in Pennellville. I had Kim and my, you know, I talked with my mother and she says, now you can have the baby baptized or christened, whatever. See, in the Baptist church, it's right. Christian. Right. So here it's baptismal. Yeah. And uh, so that's where Kim was baptized and then, you know, grew up to be a member. And my mother, I remember coming out for the baptism and she said, your church are still your church people. She said, it's not the building. She said, it's very fortunate that you've got a beautiful church building, but she says, that's not, you know, so that I think she's affected me. M is for the million things she gave me. O means only that she's growing old. E is for the tears she shed to save me. H is for her heart of purest gold. E is for her eyes with love light shining. R is right and right, she'll always be. Put them all together, they spell mother. A word that means the world to me. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Who are your sheroes? Do you have people who were influences in your life who you cross paths with, who had an impact on you in ways that uh, were so deep and profound and, um, and in ways that maybe you didn't even recognize until years later? I'm talking about the neighbor. I'm talking about the aunts. I don't even talk about the cousins. I'm talking about the school bus drivers, the crossing guards, the women that were working the lunchroom, the teachers, the coaches, all of those people who have had an incredible uh, impact on our lives. I've been thinking about a lot of the sheroes. My uh, teachers, so many of them that were such big influences on me. My friend Bobby Dexter, who passed away at the end of December, she uh, had turned 98 just nine days earlier. What an incredible woman she was. And for me personally, she was one who was such an encourager of me, especially in the time when I was going through seminary. But the thing I just loved about Bobby was that at any event, anywhere, she was always the one that was making sure that everybody knew everybody or that everybody felt included. She would invite people to sit at her table. She would go over to people and introduce them to everybody in the room. And that's not something everybody does, and she did. And uh, I'll never forget what an encourager Bobby was. And I think of my Aunt Donna, who is my godmother. She's my dad's sister. And uh, it's funny how you, you kind of go through life and it takes a while before you really realize what an incredible impact they had. And, and uh, well, my aunt was a single mom for so many years. And for a job opportunity, perhaps, she uh, picked up stakes here in Syracuse, where she actually had a support system. Her parents were here. Other folks were here. But she wanted to make a better life for herself and for her family. And they moved to Florida. And she's still there. And she made a great good life. And she, she raised her kids there. It takes a lot of courage. And she's the one whose family I went to church with when my family left the Lutheran church before I found the Methodist church. What an impact that's had on me. Thank you, Aunt Donna, for being you.
And there are others, and I'm sure that you have many. Think of them. Thank them. Question, and um, I knew that ahead of time that you were going to ask it, and I thought maybe I'd talk about my mother, who was a woman of, of great faith. Um, but today, when you asked the question, immediately I thought of my sister Sharon, and I actually got um, a little bit teary. Now, in typical fashion with sisters, there's always a little bit of, um, I guess you would say, competition or whatever. And um, Sharon, for people that know her, she's very outgoing and she's also, um, um, what would you say, uh, a problem solver. She likes to give advice and especially with me, she always wants to act as a big sister. And sometimes I guess I resent that a little bit. Um, Sharon's always had a very strong faith and um, when I say something like, oh, I'm having anxiety about something, her answer is always, well, you just need to say the Lord's Prayer. And uh, she'll say things like, well, you need to trust God's plan. And um, sometimes it kind of turns me off and it's kind of a little bit intimidating. And um, anyways, when Bob died, she and I met a couple weeks after his death and we were um, at the Beeville Diner. And of course, we, I knew we would say grace because that's what Sharon always does. And uh, she started in on something, giving me advice about how to deal with something. And I, I just kind of wanted to tell her in a polite way that she needed to back off. And I said something nice to her, like, um, well, Sharon, um, you know, I think it's great that you have such a, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I said, I think it's great that you have such a strong faith. I said, but I'm just not feeling it right now. And uh, she reached across the table to my hand and she said, Judy, what do you really know about my faith? And for Sharon, that was a big move because she really showed um, her vulnerability. And for me, when people show their vulnerability, that's a great strength. Um, and so in that moment, um, she really was a huge witness to me because she was saying that it's okay to have doubts and it's okay to sometimes mistrust or not understand um, big picture are God's plans for us. And um, she, since then, has gone through even worse things. And sometimes I feel like it's almost a competition to see, you know, who's gone through the worst thing. And she lost her daughter tragically. And um, anyway, Sharon was over just the other day. And, you know, we're both able to sit and laugh and smile and know that, you know, we are on a faith journey. And sometimes we're in different places, but we care about each other and we both, you know, love God. And um, anyways, she is truly an inspiration to me. And I'm sure, Jeff, that there's times when my sister's been an inspiration to you as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's amazing. She um, so that's, that's what I wanted to share. And it's just so weird because I don't know that I've ever really thought about it until this morning. And so I want yeah. to thank you for um, prompting those feelings in me. Oh, thank you. That's my sharing. That's nice. Thank you for that sharing. Well, Sunday is Mother's Day, and uh, this particular day is focused on mothers and other sheroes, is what we're calling them, as all of these women, not only just in our own lives, but throughout history that have left such incredible imprints on our hearts and on our faith. And um, as we talk about this this day, I can't help but think about all of the women that weren't even re related to me that I felt such an incredible kinship to that all actually most of them came from the same place of faith because where I grew up was the church at State Street, which is where we all met. And I just think about some of the incredible role models there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, um, like, well, I, Evelyn Austic comes to my mind. Yeah. Someone who was just so, she was, I don't even know if steely is the word, but like steely in her faith. I mean, even at the end, her comment to me when she was just some months from passing was, I'm disappointed, but I know... I'm sure, I don't think she said I'm clear in my faith, but that was clear, in, that she was clear in her faith. And that's amazing. She was yep. amazing. And of course, um, Charlene Dean, mm -hmm. very special, very important to me. Mm -hmm. yep. How, who are some for you? 
Han Fall. She was my first Sunday teacher. Yes, yes, Han Fall. And, uh, Evelyn Lamont. She, Evelyn Lamont. Yeah. And Tim Myers was just a sweet. Of course. Well, yeah, and and you know, and I think about I think about Evelyn Lamont with her um, focus on mission, both local and global mission. And then I look at her daughter, and she has that same mm -hmm. focus that she's passed that right on to Gail. That mm -hmm. she also carries out many of those missions, and that, yeah. that is just that is so that's neat to see yeah. that legacy. Yeah. Yeah. But people, but people didn't know a lot that Evelyn Lamont did. She used to take groceries out to migrant right. workers, and, but she never right. told anybody about it. I found anybody. out years later. Years right. and years later, through her daughter, right. Gail told me about right. it. Well, I learned, I learned those, I learned that story at her at her memorial service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. she did a lot, like a lot, helping people and you know just being a servant of God. But she never ever right. told people. About it. Just a very quiet, right, very quiet. Very I quietly. think that might be the common thread of all those because as I think about yes. Helen Myers too, is they were yes. just very incredible, but they weren't, they weren't big flashing Perfect. lights, but they were beautiful no. streams of light, of, of right. uh, God's yeah, light. They were yeah. truly servants of God, but they didn't, you didn't know it. I mean, you knew it because they exuded that. I mean, you felt yeah. it from them, but they yeah. did many things that other people just never knew. Right, right. They really did, right. They were serving the God. God. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But Ms. they were just... And Ms. Malone was another person that I've been yeah. I've thought of. She, Gordy's mother... Gordy's oh, mother. Yes. Oh. She, she was there every Sunday. She was faithful. It did not matter. She was going to be there in church. And, and I never remember not seeing her there. Right. Until she passed. It was just. Right. She'd be there. Well, yeah. yeah. All her uh, faith and not, and not to give up on her faith. I just mm -hmm. thought that was, yeah. that was incredible to mm -hmm. me as a kid to think, wow. Now, do you remember Eleanor Spur, Martha? Yep, yep. Yep. Now, she was very big in Girl Scouts because I was uh, from Brownie up to Senior, Explorer Scout, Senior Girl Scout, and she was always in charge of the Girl Scouts, and she was had a beautiful spirit also. Oh, okay. So um, that, that's one I did not know. Yep. Eleanor Spur. Helen yeah. Ball was my Girl Scout was Girl Scout leader too when I was in oh, was she? Girl Scout. She was my junior's leader when I first mm -hmm. went there. Yeah. See, Eleanor was a lot. Well, she was like over the, the leaders. But when the girl, she always did like the senior scout. She was definitely yeah. the senior scout. And one of my like, favorites as a young adult and then moving into my senior adult, uh, into my older years, I don't know how to say that. I'm not a senior citizen, but mid years, whatever. <laughs> Is I just want to be very clear. I am not well. Okay, very well, clear. Be under clear. Let's be clear. I am. Okay. Never mind. But just a youngin. <laughs> Helen Demore is who I'm speaking of. Oh God! Because yes, Helen. she was a Sunday school teacher when I was in. I was. I had Dave Rath for senior high, so she was junior high, and I didn't have her because I had moved. Mm -hmm. I had. I had come from somewhere else, but. Mm -hmm. But then, um, of course, when we were doing a lot of lay speaking and um, a lot of uh, pulpit supply, she was in mm -hmm. her 80s and she was still yeah. taking lay speaking classes and she was yeah. doing a lot of the disciple Bible studies because she was yeah. a disciple of Jesus Christ. And mm -hmm. that was all that it was about for her. And people would say, yeah. wow, you're in your 80s and you're still taking classes. And she would look stunned that they would say that. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually, the natural yeah. outflow of who she was. Yeah. She yeah. just had her feet planted, and she mm -hmm. was looking forward, moving forward, mm -hmm. yeah, in faith. She was something. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I think about both of your moms. Yeah. Who I, who, who, who yeah, we got to talk about our moms too. <laughs> right. Oh my God. Yes, I mean, oh my God, Jenny Wilbur. Oh my gosh, yes, I have Jenny. I was a candy striper, and she was a nurse. And, she taught me how to do so many things. When I went to nursing school, people were so impressed. I knew how to take a pulse. I knew how to take a temperature. I knew how to take a blood pressure. It's like, oh my God, where'd you learn all this stuff? And I go, from Jenny Wilbur, you know, from Mrs. That's Wilbur. Awesome. <laughs> I so, still have oh, people yeah. come up to me and say, 
you're Jenny Wilbur's daughter. She was my nurse in da 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 da. Or yeah, mom yeah, was, she was wonderful. I, I was when my mother had me. She was my her nurse. And, that's yeah, nice. she, was, she was just wonderful. She taught me so That's much. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, and um, Vivian was, I was, I was going to say Vivian was in choir with me. I guess I was in choir with her since she'd been in choir for 60 years or whatever. Yeah, she was, she was uh, one of the originals. <laughs> she was yeah, one of the originals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She loved uh, it. Oh, she and she was so she kind. Was I know we often think that the greeting card industry started Mother's Day, but they didn't. It actually got its start in the Methodist Episcopal Church in 1907. I read this to you. Observed the second Sunday in May, this day honors all mothers. It began in its present form with a special service in May 1907 at the Methodist Episcopal Church in Grafton, West Virginia. The service was organized by a Methodist laywoman, Anna Jarvis, to honor her mother, who had died on May 9, 1905. By 1908, Anna Jarvis was advocating that all mothers be honored on the second Sunday in May. And in 1912, the Methodist Episcopal Church recognized the day and raised it to the national agenda. It has some parallels with the old English Mothering Sunday in Mid-Lent, which focused on returning home and paying homage to one's mother and with Mother's Day for Peace, which was introduced in 1872 by Julia Ward Howe in Boston as a day dedicated to peace. In this week that in the United Methodist Church, we celebrate the festival of the Christian home. And in a weekend when we celebrate Mother's Day, I offer this prayer to all mothers and mother figures. Let us pray. For our mothers who have given us life and love, that we may show them reverence and love, we pray to the Lord. For mothers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope, and their family and friends support and console them, we pray to the Lord. For women, though without children of their own, who like mothers have nurtured and cared for us, we pray to the Lord. For mothers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And this comes from the Book of Blessings. 